Leonard Harold Burrow, August 5, 1941, August 12, 1984, was a Canadian guitarist and music educator. Bro blended many styles of music, including jazz, country, classical, and flamenco. Inspired by country guitarists like Chet Atkins, Bro used fingerstyle techniques not often used in jazz guitar. By using a seven-string guitar and approaching the guitar like a piano, he opened up possibilities for the instrument. Biography Canadian Country Brewer was born August 5, 1941, in Auburn, Maine, but moved with his family to Moncton, New Brunswick in 1948. His Francophone parents, Harold Bro and Betty Cody, were professional country and western musicians who performed and recorded from the mid-1930s until the mid-1970s. From the mid to late 1940s they played summer engagements in southern New Brunswick, advertising their performances by playing free programs on radio station CKCW Moncton. Lenny began playing guitar at the age of eight. When he was twelve, he started a small band with friends and by the age of 14 he was the lead guitarist for his parents' band, billed as Lone Pine Jr., playing Merle Travis and Chet Atkins instrumentals and occasionally singing. He made his first professional recordings in Westbrook, Maine at Event Records with Al Hawks at the age of 15 while working as a studio musician. Many of these recordings were released posthumously on the album Boy Wonder. The Bro family moved to Winnipeg, Manitoba, in 1957, and their new band performed around the city and province as the CKY Caravan. Their shows were radio broadcast live on Winnipeg CKY on Saturday mornings from remote locations. Turning to jazz around 1959 Bro left his parents' country band after his father slapped him in the face for incorporating jazz improvisation into his playing with the group. He sought out local jazz musicians, performing at Winnipeg venues Rando Manor and the Stage Door. He met pianist Bob Erlinson, who began teaching him more of the foundations of jazz. In 1962, Bro left for Toronto and created the jazz group 3 with singer and actor Don Franks, and young Hensridge on acoustic bass. Three performed in Toronto, Ottawa, and New York City. Their music was featured in the 1962 national film or documentary Toronto Jazz. They recorded a live album at the Village Vanguard in New York City and appeared on the Jackie Gleason and Joey Bishop television shows. Returning to Winnipeg, Bro became a session guitarist, recording for CBC Radio and CBC Television, and contributed to CBC TV's Teen Beat, Music Hop, and his own The Lenny Bro Show. In 1963 and 1964, Bro appeared at David Ingram's Fourth Dimension at 2000 Pembina Highway in Fort Gary, a suburb of Winnipeg. Every Sunday night was a party open to all. Another regular at the club on Sunday nights was Neil Young and his band with Vancouver CKNW's Rick Honey as his drummer. In 1967, recordings of bros playing from the Lenny Bro Show found their way to Chet Atkins. The ensuing friendship resulted in bros' first two albums, Guitar Sounds from Lenny Bro and The Velvet Touch of Lenny Bro, Live. On RCA.H he lived in various Canadian cities until returning to the United States in 1976. For several years he moved between Maine, Nashville, Stockton, California, and New York City, eventually settling in Los Angeles in 1983. These years he spent performing, teaching, and writing for Guitar Player magazine. A few more solo albums were issued during his lifetime, in addition to albums recorded with fiddler Buddy Spitcher and pedal steel guitarist Buddy Emmons. Bro had problems with drugs beginning in the 1960s which he managed to control during the last years of his life. On August 12, 1984, his body was found in a swimming pool at his apartment complex in Los Angeles, California. The coroner reported that Bro had been strangled. Bro's wife, Jewel, was the chief suspect, but she was not charged. He is interred in an unmarked grave at Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery. Posthumous honors many live and lost recordings have been issued since Bro's death, 
and most of his previously released albums have also been reissued. Due to efforts by Randy Bachman of Guitar Chives, Paul Kohler of Art of Life Records, Tim Tomashiro of CBC Radio and others, a new generation of listeners has access to his music. A documentary entitled The Genius of Lenny Brewer was produced in 1999 by Bro's daughter, Emily Hughes. This Gemini Award winning film includes interviews with Chet Atkins, Ted Green, Pat Metheny, George Benson, Leonard Cohen, and Bachman, as well as family members. George Benson said, He dazzled me with his extraordinary guitar playing, I wish the world had the opportunity to experience his artistry. The biography won long tune. The Life and Music of Lenny Bro by Ron Forbes Roberts was published in 2006 containing interviews with nearly 200 people and a comprehensive discography. CBC Radio presented a documentary on Lenny Bro entitled On the Trail of Lenny Bro. The title is in reference to Bro's parents' song, On the Trail of the Lonesome Pine. It was first broadcast on September 13, 2009 as part of a regular weekly program called Inside the Music. It was narrated by Bro's son, Chet. The one-hour feature was produced in Montreal by John Kelly P.K.O. Bro was inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame in 1997. Technique and Guitars Bro's fully mature technique was a combination of Chet Atkins's and Merle Travers's finger-picking and Sabacus-influenced flamenco, highlighted by right-hand independence and flurries of artificial harmonics. His harmonic sensibilities were a combination of his country roots, classical music, modal music, Indian, and jazz, particularly the work of pianist Bill Evans. Bro often adapted Evans's compositions, such as, Funny Man, for guitar. Bro said in relation to this, I approach the guitar like a piano. I've reached a point where I transcend the instrument. A lot of the stuff I play on the seven-string guitar is supposed to be technically impossible, but I spent over 20 years figuring it out. I play the guitar like a piano. There's always two things going on at once. I'm thinking melody, but I'm also thinking of a background. I play the accompaniment on the low strings. He had two custom seven-string guitars made, one classical and one electric. At the time, no company made a string that could be tuned to the high A on his classical guitar. Bro used fishing line of the correct age until the Labella company began making a string for him. The electric guitar was made by Kirk Sand, also with the first string being a high A. Discography The Velvet Touch of Lenny Bro, Live. RCA Victor, 1969. Guitar Sounds from Lenny Bro, RCA Victor, 1969. Miners Allowed, Buddy Emmons with Lenny Bro, Flying Fish, 1978. Five O'Clock Bells, Adolfi, 1979. Lenny Bro, Direct Disc Labs, 1979. The Legendary Lenny Bro, Now. Sound Hole. 1979 Standard Brands with Chet Atkins, RCA Victor, 1981 Mobro, Adolfi, 1981 When Lightning Strikes, Tudor, 1982 Legacy with David Young, Relaxed Rabbit, 1984 Quietude with Dave Young, Electric Muse, 1985 The Living Room Tapes, Volume 1 with Brad Terry, Living Room, 1986 Last Sessions, Adolfi 1988, The Living Room Tapes, Volume 2 with Brad Terry, Musical Heritage Society, 1990, Live at Bourbon Street with Dave Young, Guitar Chives, 1995, Chance Meeting, Tal Farlow with Lenny Bro, Guitar Chives, 1997, Cabin Fever, Guitar Chives, 1997, Boy Wonder, Guitar Chives, 1998, Live at Dante's, String Jazz, 2000, Pick and Cotton with Richard Cotton, Guitar Chives, 2001, The Hallmark Sessions, Art of Life, 2003, The Complete Living Room Tapes with Brad Terry, Art of Life, 2003, At the Purple Onion with Don Franks and Dion Hanstridge, Art of Life, 2004, Mosaic, Guitar Chives, 2006, LA Bootleg 1984, Linus Entertainment, 2014. See also 
Music of Canada Canadian Music Hall of Fame References External links Any MS Book Early Lenny Bro at the Wayback Machine, archived October 27, 2009 The Genius of Lenny Bro, PDF Document, retrieved July 3, 2009